This is the Getting Into Alignment podcast. Here we play in the quantum world of possibilities. If you desire it, you get to have it. My name is Alexa Ray Smith. I'm a business coach and spiritual teacher for women in business. I'm here to help you unlock your personal power and tap into your magnetism so that you can manifest the most incredible life for yourself and build the business of your dreams. These episodes will help you plug into the energy of infinite potentiality and teach you the tools you need to play in this world where limitations don't exist. On this podcast, I'll be talking to you about energetics, mindset, embodiment, spirituality, money, and business. Everything that you want is on the other side of you getting into alignment. Do you want to have the freedom to design your own life? Are you ready to know that you have the power to create any reality that you desire? If so, Alchemy of Manifestation, my manifestation community, is designed to help you manifest anything that you've ever desired. Within this year-long membership, you will learn proven techniques to gain the abundance, success, and happiness that you've always desired. You're going to learn to tap into the power of the universe so that you can alchemize any reality that you've ever wanted. Not only will you learn to manifest your new reality, you'll also learn how to build a new identity so that you become the person who effortlessly, energetically aligns with all of their desires. So if you're completely ready to transform your life and unlock your full potential, then join Alchemy of Manifestation today and you can start manifesting everything you've ever desired. Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Alexa. Today we are on day nine of my 30 days of manifestation podcast where I am talking to you in depth about Areas where I see people consistently making mistakes and messing up their manifestations. I really want us as a collective to do the healing work, to do the mindset work, to do the frequency work. Like I want us all to know that we aren't limited, that we have the power to have anything that we want, but we have to be willing to be the person that knows this in their soul that is embodied in that. And so many people, quite frankly, are still so programmed by the matrix and that is what's keeping them from manifesting their desires. So today I want to talk to you about why you have to stop defending the struggle. I have noticed that the more viral posts go, especially when it is a coach or a mentor teaching someone how to manifest, how to make money, how to live an incredible life. There are so many people that are literally just being haters in the comments. And to me, I just truly don't understand it because if someone is telling you, hey, I lived like that too and it sucked and I was unhappy and I was miserable and I was broke and I was scared and I hated my life and then I learned how to have a different perspective. I learned how to change myself so that I was happy, so that I was filled, so that I was abundant and then because of all of these internal changes that I made, everything in my life changed and now I have a business that I'm madly in love with. Now I have a partner who is better than anything I could have ever imagined. We are happier, more fulfilled. We have the best fucking sex. We love each other. We support each other. It's better than I ever could have even thought a partnership could be. I live in a house that's beyond my wildest dreams. I have a vacation home in another country and it's so epic. I travel first class all over the world. I get to buy my family and friends anything that they desire. I get to buy myself anything that I desire. And it's not about what I can buy. It's about the person that I became so that money was effortless to me. Like, wouldn't you want to say, I don't care how long I've been subscribing to these stories of limitation, fear, doubt, worry, stress, like wouldn't you just say, okay, obviously the way that I was told to live 
like they had a really good PR person, but they, it was a crock of shit. Obviously the people who know how to create wealth, who are self-made multimillionaires, who are living their best life, they know all of this. They may not be teaching it to you because they might still be in this power play of the old paradigm where they're like, well, we can keep people enslaved if we keep them thinking that they have to work for us, they have to work hard, that money is a limited resource, that they don't get to be happy, that they have to sacrifice the things that they want, that things are too good to be true, so you better look out for that. It's like, why? Why would you continue to subscribe into these narratives that suck? I just honestly don't get it. Every time... I post on YouTube and some video goes viral, specifically when it's one telling you how that you can become a wealthy person. Everyone's like, so you're telling me. Anytime that someone says, so you're telling me in a comment, is somebody defending their limitation? And then they're gonna throw a bunch of shade your way, which I don't understand. First of all, why are we still allowing social media antics of people who are jaded and hateful and hurtful. We really need to hold higher boundaries for ourselves. Like I get that Facebook created an epidemic where everyone thought that they could just start letting their hate show and they don't have to take accountability for it. But in my world, I'm holding you to a higher standard and I actually don't entertain your victim mindset. And I actually can tell from a mile away whether you are trying to become self-aware, whether you are self-aware or whether self-awareness is the farthest thing that you're from. Like it's honestly, I have been doing personal development work for the greater part of two decades now. I have been coaching. I have been teaching. I have been mentoring. I have had so many people in my world. And quite honestly, even if I didn't, I went through all of this myself. I know how shitty it is to live in the matrix. I know how terrible it is when you have to go to work every single day to a job that you hate with a boss that micromanages you, that you know that you're so much more capable of that you know that you were put on this earth to have so much more, but every single person around you is telling you that you are selfish for wanting that. Everyone is telling you that you should be grateful for what you have. That's what I was told when I worked for the state of New York. I worked for the New York state government for eight years. And on day one, like the first month of my career there, I wanted to die. And I mean that, like I literally was suicidally depressed because it was the worst. I was working in personal income tax and I fucking hate personal income tax. There is nothing more boring. There is like, I literally, there is nothing in it for me as somebody who loves things that are very difficult and complex and are actually enriching to my mind. I hated it. And I literally said, are you kidding me? I worked for the New York state government because I literally asked myself, who is the happiest person that I know that is secure with money? And I looked around and it was my aunt Meg. And I was like, okay, what did my aunt Meg do? She worked at the New York state tax department for 30 years. She was the happiest person that I know with her career. And then I got into the state and I realized that she was like a one-off that people were not happy. Most people were alcoholics. Most people were drug addicts to even get themselves through the day. Like if you guys even knew who worked for the government that you like put so much faith in, you would seriously start questioning like everything, which is what I want you to do. I want you, I want you to question everything. But it was like, I technically on paper was blessed. I had a pension that I couldn't lose. I had a bi-weekly paycheck. I had the best health insurance that you could ask for in the state of New York. I had a 40 hour work week. I, you know what I mean? Like on paper for a blue collar teaching, that's it that you couldn't ask for anything better. I had the opportunity for mobility we're not even going to get into the complexities of that, but technically the opportunity for promotion was there. And I've never been more miserable in my life ever. I've never felt like I was more off track and more out of alignment than working there. 
ever. And if I asked or talked to anyone in my family, they would tell me how ungrateful I was. They would tell me how, how I should, I should be so thankful for this job and this career that most people would kill for. And I was like, if this is it, like if if this is it, then like, honestly, it's pretty hard for me to find gratitude because I just don't understand why I should feel grateful for something that truly makes me feel like my soul is dying. Now I ended up literally saying, if I do not get out of this department in the next month, I will quit. I will end my career and I will be gone. And now part of me wishes that I did just leave and not actually manifest me having an opportunity to move to the most complicated tax type, which was sales tax. And I fucking love sales tax. Never, ever, ever did anyone, including me, think that I would say that out loud. Like somebody can love taxes. I fucking love sales tax because it's so fucking complex. If you are in the state of New York and you're a business owner, you understand and you're paying literally half of your income to the tax department pretty much. So I get as a business owner, it sucks. Like, why do you think as a business owner, I no longer live in the state of New York, but the complexity of taxes. I loved, I loved reading taxes. I loved reading laws. Like I wanted to go to, I wanted to be a lawyer. I like, I really did. But then I realized, no, I I don't want to fight a system that's inherently broken. And I broke free. But the whole point of this story is We are told that that is the American dream for you to go to college, get a career, have a pension, have a paycheck, have health insurance, get married, buy a house, have some kids or get a dog or cat. But like, there you are set for life. You can complain forever because that's what we do, but you're never going to be happy because happiness isn't like a part of the American dream, right? It's just that you get things. But everybody who's ever lived out the American dream and in their heart and in their soul realized that that was a whole crock of shit. Once they get everything on the American dream, they really realize that it's a crock of shit. So the first thing you have to do if you want to escape the matrix is you have to stop defending the matrix. You have to stop defending the programming that has kept you stuck. You have to stop defending the programming that keeps you in a lack frequency and a lack mindset. I understand that you have been told your entire life that that's the only way. And I also understand that you have seen examples of people breaking out of that mold over and over and over again. What I encourage you to do if you want to manifest your best life ever is start collecting examples of people who have broken free from the mold and are living wealthy, happy, successful, fulfilled, and enriching lives. Because I'm going to tell you, everyone who has broken free from the matrix is doing that. You just need to stop looking at the matrix. Because again, when we talk about how your mind actually works on a subconscious level, Everything that's happening in your world, everything that's always happened, your mind subconsciously is taking in all of this. It's literally taking it all in. But because that would literally overload you on a conscious level, the reticular activating system in your mind is what is, it's what you basically tell your mind you are focusing on. So it's what you are consciously feeding your energy into. That's what you're telling your mind is important. You are going to get evidence of what you tell your mind is important. You are always going to get evidence of what you are telling your mind is true. There is no actual truth. Everything is a perspective. Everything is in flux. There is nothing matter of fact because matter is energetic at its most subatomic level. So what you need to start doing is you need to start finding more evidence for the life that you desire rather than continuing to collect evidence of the life that you don't want to live. And here's the thing. All people will tell me all the time, but it's so hard to rewire my mind. It's so hard to regulate my nervous system. It's so hard to stay in wealth frequency. You know what's fucking hard? 
being broke as fuck, not knowing how you're going to pay your bills, not knowing how you're going to feed yourself, not ever being able to take a day off, not being able to go on vacations, not being able to pay for Reiki sessions so that you can energetically stay in alignment, not being able to pay for organic food so that you're eating nutrient dense food, not being able to buy supplements so that you're healthy, not being able to sleep eight hours a night because you're stressing about money, not being able to pay your mortgage so that you're literally dysregulating your nervous system and getting stuck in Maslow's hierarchy of needs in the bottom sector where you're living in fear and you're so dysregulated because you feel unsafe. What is hard is staying in the matrix for your entire life. Why do we see so many people depressed, anxious, and suicidal these days? I just don't understand why we can't talk about this anymore either. Like the fact that we have to use the term unalive. I'm a trauma-informed coach and I just don't understand like why are we continuing to play victims and why are we continuing to have to look at how we are speaking and teaching to make it so the victims still feel like they get to be a victim. That is keeping you in the matrix. If you don't already understand that the schooling system is a factory schooling system that was created during the industrial revolution to keep you an obedient employee because that's the only way that they could take you out of living your life on the farm with your family, supported by everyone doing what you loved to do because it was what your family has always done, bartering and trading. How did they get you to go work in unsafe and unfair conditions for a low wage? They created a schooling system where they told you it was free so that you could learn. And then they, they indoctrinated you to believe their version of history. They indoctrinated you to believe their version of how life has to go. The matrix has been programming you from day one. The matrix programmed your parents. The matrix programmed the grandparents. Like we have to realize that throughout human history, in America anyway, we have always been living in a matrix, always. So the only way for us to escape the matrix is for us to think differently than our past generation by our parents, our grandparents, and everyone before that. Lack is what they were sold on a platter. You have to be the one that accepts the fact that you came here on earth during this time to break the lineage. You have to be the one that says, if I feel depressed, it's not that there's something wrong with me. It's that there's something wrong with the way that I'm living my life. I'm feeling depressed because what I'm investing my time and energy and intention into is not enriching me. It doesn't make me happy. It doesn't satisfy me. Our emotions were put in us as a guidance system. And what has society taught you not to listen to? Your emotions, especially as a woman. And I go really deep into this in my program, Emotional, which is for emotional authorities in human design, which is 53% of the population. So if you're like me and you have an emotional authority, even if you're not an emotional authority though, that means that you really only feel a, a lot of emotions when you're around emotional authorities. So this program is life-changing because it teaches you how to navigate your emotions, how to honor them, and how to feel them. You are not taught this. Emotional intelligence is not something we are taught. As women, we are told that we are too emotional, that we are bitchy, that da da da, da. As men, we're, you're told that you're weak if you are emotional, that you have to be strong and you have to be the one that everyone relies on so you cannot show any type of emotions except for maybe anger. But our society, like you guys, if, if you're not aware yet that society is intentionally keeping you in this paradigm because you're easy to control. You like think about it like it's a big chess game. You're a pawn. You are a pawn if you're living in the matrix. Like there I'm not sugarcoating it because quite frankly you've been playing the victim way too fucking much in your life. And I get it. That's what you're told to do. You are told that when you are with your coworkers you better bitch about your job. You're told that when you're with your friends you better bitch about and talk about all the problems and everything that you don't like and everything that's going wrong in your life. 
We've literally been programmed to believe that the only way that we can connect with people is by talking negatively and talking about bad things. What is that quote that says the matrix still exists because people, people keep playing their role as a pawn in the system, going to work every day, complaining, doing all of these things that are low vibrational and lack based when Everyone that's broken free has realized that the only way that you can break free is to stop living like that. You have to realize that you are not benefiting by complaining. You are not benefiting by talking about your struggles. You are not benefiting by talking about how sick you are, about how broke you are, about how you don't have this and you don't have that and you wish this was different. That is literally you finding lack in everything. Why don't you start talking about what you desire? Why don't you start focusing on what you have? Why don't you start feeling grateful for everything that you have right now? And not in the sense of you should feel grateful because fuck the shoulds, fuck the shoulds. If it makes you happy, keep doing it. If it doesn't make you happy, stop doing it and stop talking about it. Like the way we were raised isn't the way to get into wealth and to get into freedom and to get into satisfaction. If you actually want to do the work so that you can be part of the people that are raising the consciousness and helping the collective create a new paradigm, you have to be the one that says, no, I'm not available for this anymore. I'm not available for the struggle. I'm not available for the sacrifice. I'm not available for the lack. I'm not available for the worry. I'm not available for the doubt. I'm not available for the fear. Is there always an opportunity for you to go into all of those? Yes. We live in a dualistic planet where polarities exist. That's literally how the holographic universe is created. So that way we think we're in a world of form by the negative and positive polarities. But if we keep being negatively oriented as a consciousness level, then we're going to keep seeing struggle, sacrifice, worry, doubt, and fear. I just like people are like, well, it can't be good because look at everyone suffering. Actually, maybe everyone suffering is an example of the fact that no negative polarities have to exist, but that's just an example of one thing you can play out. You can also play out the, the story of being a self-made millionaire, of doing work that makes you happy, of having a family that you're madly in love with, of having a partner that actually gives you orgasms, of you know actually being in love with your life, actually having friends that you feel fulfilled when you hang out with, not leaving people and feeling worse than you did before. Our society thrives on people, like the whole slogan, misery loves company, that is the American dream. Like that is the matrix. If we just keep them miserable and tell them this is the way that they have to be, and if we just keep telling them to talk about their misery, they'll never realize there's another way. Like that's actually what's happening from the wealthiest people that keep creating this paradigm. If you keep watching the news, if you keep watching the media, if you keep learning from people that are in a blue collar poverty mindset, then you're not going to be able to tap into what is actually available to you. You can keep playing out the stories that you have to be broke and miserable forever, but don't get into my world and expect that I'll allow you to play a victim because I'm going to call you out. That is my potency as a mentor and a coach is I'm going to call you on your blind spot the second that you even breathe victim, let alone start crying victim. You have to be the one that decides I'm better than this. I'm better than this complaint. I'm better than focusing on lack. I'm better than always living in fear. I'm better than having to look at the price tag on everything before I decide if I want it. You can't just go to the, go to the restaurant and look at the food and decide what you want to have because it's intuitively what you want to eat and what you desire and then get it. Like that sucks. That sucks to have to look at a price tag to tell you what you're available for in your life. Why don't you decide what you're available for in your life and do the work so that it's actually a reality for you? I just, like this one was a tough love episode, but I'm just noticing more and more 
with the more videos I create to try and help you guys, the more comments get flooded in about lack, 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 lack. There's a quote that says, if you keep arguing for your limitations, that's what you're going to get. And that's exactly what most people in society are doing. They are arguing for their limitations. They're speaking about their reality as it has been and how it is with their lack-based perspective. Instead of deciding how they want it to go and speaking in alignment with that and only speaking the things that they desire, noticing when lack comes up and instead of playing it out, they get to the root of it and they swat it away like a fly and then they go back to being abundant. Is it going to take work to get you out of the matrix and into the vortex like Abraham Hicks calls it? Fuck yeah. But what is the opposite? You're going to slave away at a job working hard for not enough money to have a life that you don't want to live so that way you can complain for the next 50 years. If the alternative is having to do some personal development work on, on yourself so that way you feel better every single day when you wake up so that way you're excited to work so that way you're excited to have adventures, to travel, to shop, to live, to be you, then yeah, it's fucking worth it. But you have to be the one that decides that you're willing to do the heavy lifting now to rewire, recode, and regulate yourself so that way for the rest of your life, that's who you are. Here's the thing. You do this all once, you work through it, and then the majority of the work is done. It's just then you'll notice if a lack or limitation comes up and then you can laugh about it because you're not... That's not a frequency you play into anymore. So you're going to be so self-aware that you're just going to laugh even at the hint of it. So you won't entertain it. You won't play it out. You will be able to see people living in lack and you're just going to separate yourself from them because you're going to realize that lack is one option and so is abundance. So which one do you want? Because you're the one that's deciding. No one else. So stop blaming anyone else. Stop defending the struggle, stop defending your limitations, stop, just stop everything that is keeping you from being the person that you want to be. And instead of having a fixed mindset about things, start becoming conscious and start getting interested in how that thought was even there in the first place. So that way you can remove it, rewire it, and then become a completely different person. If you want help in this, of course, the deepest way is to get into private mentorship. I do have spaces open right now. In my private mentorship, you do get access to all of my programs. So you get access to the Alchemy of Manifestation membership, as well as every single program I have on business, energetics, manifestation, mindset, and psyche and some spirituality. <laughs> like you get access to my entire body of work. If you are not ready there, if you haven't done the money mindset work, if you haven't done the wealth frequency work, so you're still limited in terms of money at this time, then currency next month is my wealth frequency program. I would encourage you to get into that. And if you're not there yet, then Alchemy of Manifestation is the best place for you to be. It is a monthly membership. You save I think like $4,000 <laughs> like just being in the membership because I wanted to make this accessible to the collective. I am not really trying to generate a lot of money off of this. As a spiritual teacher, I am literally here so I can uplift the collective consciousness and this is how I'm doing it. I'm teaching you how to manifest so that way you can change your reality so that way you can start living your best fucking life ever and then you can create a business of your dreams because... That's the only way to have financial freedom, time freedom, and location freedom. And who doesn't want that? All right. I love you guys so much. Until the next episode, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're ready to go deeper and to get into my world, you can go to my website, alexaraysmith.com. You'll find all of my current programs on there. If you're desiring to get mentored by me, then the best thing to do is shoot me a DM on Instagram and we can talk about mentorship options and which one's the best fit for you. 
If you're absolutely loving this podcast, please go rate it five stars and let me know why you're loving it. This will help me share the podcast with more people. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. And until the next episode, keep manifesting the most incredible life.